Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship. We're so glad that you're with us. If you're a guest, uh, especially welcome. Uh, We're glad that you're joining us this morning for uh, worship. Uh, Today we are continuing our uh, Fruits of the Spirit series as we go along uh, through our Lenten series. Uh, And today we get to look at kindness and how kindness we're supposed to be uh, towards one another and how God has been ultimately kind to us. Uh, And today, uh, like we always start, uh, let's uh, rise and be kind to one another and greet one another with a handshake. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We confess our sins. God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment to reflect our personal sins. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. 
Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called, ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house 
and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide our Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your mercies, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you with your obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Numbers, chapter 21. From Mount Hor they went out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people began and became impatient on the way. And this people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and that, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it up on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the serpent, at the bronze serpent, and live. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the epistle reading is from the book of Ephesians in chapter 2. And you were dead in the trans trespasses and sin in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, and that spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passion of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love for which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace have you been saved. And raises us up with him and seats us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace have you been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. We rise as we are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. And as Moses lifted up the serpent, or serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of our Lord. 
You may be seated, and this time we invite all the children up for a children's message. Some of you are still here. I know some went to, or a bunch went to spring break, but I'm glad y'all are here. Uh, I have a question today. You heard us talking about the word we're thinking of today is kindness. What do you think that means? Give me a definite, yeah. To be kind. Was it, what's that word mean? Yeah, like nice. I think that's a good way for us to think about it. Yes, sir. You're going to say that one too? Yeah, be nice. What are some nice things you can do? What do you got? Okay, give somebody a band-aid if they got hurt. I like that. Maybe tell them about Jesus. Good. If somebody falls, help them up. Do you have any ideas? What can, what can we do to be nice? No ideas? Right. What do you got? Be a good friend. Good. Yeah. Help them if they're sad. You guys got lots of... Yeah, what else? Be a friend if they don't have one. Chase, you got one? Sisters, hold your hand. Well, I think another way we can think about this is what's the opposite of being nice? What? Rude. Oh, that's easy. Mean. Let's see, yeah. Maybe being ugly to people, yeah. What? Bad. It, you guys got to, the, the bad, the opposite answers came a lot easier. I wonder why. <laughs> Hmm. Well, what are some things that we can do that are not nice? Yeah. You, you, you didn't even need a microphone for that. Not so. Right? Hitting, yeah, hitting is a popular idea today. So, well, let me ask you something. When you like somebody, which are you usually, to your friends, are you usually nice and kind or are you mean to your friends? Which are you usually? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, we're usually nice. It's easy to be nice to people who are nice to us, right? But what about people we don't like, people who are mean to us? What are, yeah, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> we're going to knock them out, huh? Right? Yeah, okay. Okay, so yeah. It's not, is it easy to be nice to people who are mean to us? Not at all, right? But Jesus says today, as we read our readings today, it says God loved us even when we are bad. And I want you to think about this. When we, what does it mean when we sin? What does it mean? Yeah, we're doing something bad. So are we being nice or are we being mean when we sin to God? Yeah, we're being bad. And yet... Because of because we were bad, Jesus said, I still love them, I still love you, and I'm going to go to the cross to take away your sin. That is pretty awesome, right? That even though we were not nice to him, he still loves us and he still goes to the cross for us. So that is pretty amazing, and I want us to think about that today, okay? And hopefully then, because of that, we will be nice to people, even when they're not nice to us. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me even when I'm mean. Help me to love you and love others. In your name, amen. All right, thank you all for helping us get started. You can head back to your seat.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we are going to be uh, checking a few places in our, our pew Bibles today, or if you've brought your Bible along, so please, uh, you might get those out. The first place we're going to look here shortly is uh, Book of Ruth, page 223 in your pew Bible. So if you want to get there, uh, maybe a little ahead of time. Uh, just like I talked about with the kids, and as I've been doing for uh, much of this series, as we've, as we've thought about these different fruits of the Spirit, right, and today you see uh, is kindness, and uh, it's good, like I asked the kids, to, to get a definition. Uh, so here we go, kindness. The quality of being warm-hearted, gentle, humane, sympathetic, and considerate. Uh, I asked for a service, nobody had anything else to add, but... Any other thoughts come to mind as you think uh, something that, that you thought of in yourself when you first heard us talking kindness? It was easier perhaps, uh, like you saw for the kids too, to come up with the opposite idea uh, of what kindness is, mean, rude. Um, I like the one that's ugly, right? Some words we use. So kind of the opposite uh, of kindness. Uh, we've been thinking of, let's think of some stories uh, that illustrate some of, the, you know, some of this. Ruth and Boaz. Who remembers the story of Ruth and Boaz? I have to admit, as we talked some of this, somebody mentioned it, and I couldn't remember all the details. So uh, Ruth was a daughter-in-law of who? Wow, good. First service, it didn't do so good. You guys did good. Naomi. And they actually this huge tragedy happened in their life, right? Uh, you had Naomi, Ruth, and one other daughter-in-law. Uh, they all lost their, their husbands. Uh, and of course, in those times, this is a big deal. It's a big deal for any time, but uh, at, at this point in time in history, uh, this, is, this is catastrophic for these ladies. This means nobody to take care of them. Uh, and so it would have been very difficult. Uh, uh, Naomi tells Ruth and the other one, Go home. Go, to, go to back to your families. Take, let them take care of you. Find a new husband, and everything will be fine. Ruth says, no, I'm not going to leave. And so she stays by her side. She adopts everything of Naomi's lifestyle and becomes part of that, uh, an even bigger part of the family. Uh, that's described later, as we're going to see here in a second, the first kindness. And, and long story short, they come across Boaz. Boaz is a... Uh, Kin, referred to as a kinsman redeemer, somebody in the family who was, had opportunity and had sort of an obligation to, to take in folks who were in this situation. Uh, he does, and uh, if you'll go to verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 10, okay, again, page 223, uh, I like the description here, and as he's talking to Ruth, okay, as she's decided that, the, that they're going to, uh, he's going to let them take care of her, he said, may you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter, you have made this last kindness greater than the first. Okay, so, so this book of Ruth, which by the way, Ruth is short. Uh, in your pew Bible, the whole, the whole book uh, goes from 222 to 224. So short read. You got some time this afternoon, read the book of Ruth. But kindness everywhere throughout the story. Okay? Uh, the next one. Uh, this is obscure Bible reference day, by the way, right? David, who wants to try to say that name? Mephibosheth. Who remembers who Mephibosheth is? You don't get to answer. You were there for service. Right? Mephibosheth is the son of Jonathan. Who's Jonathan even related to David? This is Old Testament stuff. David and Jonathan were best friends. If you remember when Saul was picked first to be king, uh, David is going to get to be king. And, and, and Saul's son, Jonathan, uh, and David have become very good friends. And it's, it's a trial some time because Saul and David don't get along because of Saul. But... Uh, as time goes on, David becomes king, and Mephibosheth is, is actually uh, handicapped. He can't use his legs. Uh, and at the end of all this, as Saul's been removed, David invites Mephibosheth into his family. Uh, it's a kindness he shows upon him. He doesn't have to do this. He, he invites Mephibosheth to his table for the rest of, of his days, uh, and he gives Mephibosheth back an inheritance that had been taken away. So David showers kindness upon kindness to Mephibosheth to Mephibosheth because he was his best friend's son. He took care of him because of this. And again, it's another story of kindness shown, uh, shown here in Scripture. There's lots of other stories. Pastor Chris is going to have some more folks for you on, on Wednesday as we look at the different people. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
Uh, I got a couple of others that I thought of. So as I was looking online, I thought stories of uh, acts of kindness. The Young Man's Tie, it's a great story I saw online. <coughs> Excuse me, allergies are not my friend today. Um, this story was just one online. It was a simple picture of, a, of an older gentleman helping a young man with a tie. And the story is on, anybody seen this story? A couple of you have seen it. Uh, uh, there was a young man, it was a subway or bus, I don't, I don't remember which, but the young man was on his way to an interview, uh, probably 19 or 20, young guy, uh, had, a, had a suit on, but was having trouble with his tie, and this elderly gentleman and his wife saw what was going on, didn't know this person from Adam, and he went ahead, and uh, the older gentleman stood up and, and helped the young guy get his tie straightened out. Now, it may seem like a simple thing, uh, but it was a kindness he showed, that he didn't have to help this kid, he could have let him go, and, uh, but what confidence the kid had knowing that his tie was set straight, and and just the kindness of this stranger, uh, an example of, of kindness. Uh, I thought of Hurricane Harvey and the kindness I saw in this congregation in our area as people uh, poured out and were very generous with their funds to help people uh, that were in need that had suffered so much. We had stories of people from our congregation uh, and our community driving down to the coast, taking boats, taking all sorts of things to help people when they were struggling. So story after story of kindness, of God's spirit dwelling up in people uh, to help them at those times. Uh, I put your story on here to think about what is your story of kindness? What is it that God has, has led you to do, perhaps, to be kind to someone? Or, maybe even better than that, what are some of those things that you've experienced when you uh, did not expect somebody to be kind to you? Uh, you don't have to share. Just something to be thinking about. What are those things that we remember God is doing? Now, as I mentioned to kids, though, it's very easy for us to be kind to those that we like. <clears throat> it's easy to have that kindness for people that we get along with. A bigger challenge is to be kind to people that we don't like, people that we do have conflict with, to still show them, what's the definition, the quality of being warm-hearted, gentle, humane, sympathetic, considerate. It's a greater challenge to do that because we don't like them and we don't feel those feelings naturally towards them. And in this verse today, in Luke chapter 6, Jesus is talking about this very thing. And he goes on at length for, for, for these several verses. And it's easy, of course, anybody can be nice to people that, people that are nice to us. That's a no-brainer, he says. The challenge is to be nice, to be kind, to have that fruit of the Spirit to people who, do not, who you do not like. To be kind to people that are, as we talked with the kids, that are mean to you, that may mock you, that may put you down. Even as we think about our, the church, people that persecute us and say we're wrong, can we still be kind to them? In this verse, it talks about, or that second half says, for he, he is, the, uh, is God, is kind, God himself is kind to the ungrateful and evil. And you think, well, what are you talking about? How is it that he is kind to the ungrateful and evil. And I want you to think about our stories today. And you heard uh, Mr. Medoc read. First, the bronze serpent. How were those people being to God in that story? And they were wandering through the wilderness, and what is, this is a pretty typical response we see, right? What was it they were doing to, the peop to God? What was their response to the anxiety they had? Complaining, right? It's, scripture says in many places they grumble. I don't say that today, but they were complaining to God. God had had enough at that point. He sends the fiery serpents. The fiery serpents are, are, are biting people. They're dying, right? They cry out to God, we were wrong. And God, in his kindness, relents and he sets this thing up. Build this bronze serpent. Look at the serpent and you will be healed. He didn't have to. He could have said, that's it. You guys are done. But in his kindness, he sends this, and there's a way out. Much the same way as Pastor Chris Matt read from the Gospel reading today. The cross is the same. God loves us so much that he did send his son so that we could look just to the cross and have that same salvation because of the kindness he has for us. And I want you to take to Ephesians chapter 2. Now, we've only got here listed verses 4 to 7. So page 976 in your pew Bible today. Uh, 976. You guys are quiet page turners today. I know you're all looking in there, right? 976. 
good. Ephesians 2. Um, God has this kindness for us. And you heard in the reading here, follow, uh, follow along. Ephesians 2, verse 4. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loves us, loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Even when we are dead, so we have no life, we are enemies of God because of the sin. We are not those friendly people, okay? We are those ungrateful, evil people that it was mentioned that Jesus is talking about. I don't know if we think of our sin enough that way, that we are God's enemies, that we're telling we don't need him, I don't care what you want, I'm going to do what I want to do, and yet God still loves us and he pours out his grace. It goes on, uh, by grace you have been saved and raised up us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus so that he does all of this so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Jesus. He does not have to show us this love. He does not have to pour out his grace to us. He does not have to save us. But because of his love, because he is kind, God reaches out and he sends his son, and Jesus dies for you. This is an amazing thing to think that while we were, another way scripture says that while we were still sinners, God died for us. I'm going to take you to verse 10. If you've got your Bible open there, he has done all of this for us. And it's not so that we can sit here or sit wherever it may be and just be thankful, although we certainly should be. But look at verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. It's not that God needs our good works. We've talked about this recently too. God, our neighbor, needs that kindness. God has saved you. He has rescued you while you were still that enemy so that you can tell others, so that you can share that, so you can show the same kindness to those around you. Even those who, who persecute us, even those who give you trouble each and every day, God's spirit fills you up because of the love of Jesus as it abounds in you so that you can do those good, good works that he has prepared for you to do so that you can be filled with the kindness that God has shown you in Jesus. In his name, amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding may keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting. Amen. Please rise as we join together confessing our common faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. <coughs> I believe in God.
Got a couple of quick things uh, to please add to your prayer list this week as uh, uh, we go about our week. Uh, first off, uh, continue to pray for the uh, LWR health kits uh, as we continue to collect for those. Uh, uh, we ask that you pray for the blessing that those will be to the people that will be receiving those. And then don't forget if you're uh, so moved to uh, help provide for that, uh, please check your bulletin. There's items needed in there and we're collecting in the fellowship hall. Um, also, uh, please keep in your mind uh, the prayers of the Lenten season and as we uh, get closer to our uh, Holy Week, um, again, this week we'll be continuing our, uh, our 1210 service and our seven o'clock service uh, with the uh, meal provided at 530. Uh, please continue to pray for all those that are coming. We got so many people coming from the community. Uh, it's exciting to have that. Uh, and also just continue to pray for all the things that will be going on during the week of Holy Week. Um, There's so many opportunities for uh, the community to be reached. So uh, please be stirring up in their hearts that they might uh, join us. Uh, I know there's a couple things that will be coming up. Um, well, uh, like we will be ordering some Easter lilies. I believe that's in your... Uh, announcements today that you can start ordering those. Uh, the next week we should be asking for some candy for our Easter egg hunt. Uh, like I said, just please keep those all in your prayers this week. Um, at this time, we go to God in prayer. Please rise. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for your loving kindness towards us uh, that you showed uh, by sending your Son to die for us. Uh, Lord, uh, help us uh, to feel that kindness uh, in times of need, in times of struggle. Uh, help us uh, to cling to you. Uh, Lord, uh, we also ask uh, that uh, you be with us as we show kindness to this world, uh, that we're able to show your kindness through us as we uh, minister to those around us. Uh, Lord, we pray for our mission here at uh, Emmanuel. We pray uh, that we might uh, reach this community. We might be a light uh, to those uh, that are in need. Uh, Lord, we pray for the LWR health kits. Uh, Lord, may that bless uh, those that will be receiving it. Uh, Lord, continually be with our Linton services uh, during the week, and we also lift up our Holy Week. Uh, Lord, um, may you touch the lives of many uh, that will come through our doors and through uh, the churches uh, in this community and uh, throughout the world as they celebrate uh, the uh, death and resurrection of your Son. Lord, we uh, want to lift up Gloria Day in Houston, Texas, St. Luke's in Florida. Uh, be with them as they minister to their community. Lord, we give you uh, great thanks uh, for uh, Case Watsman uh, that was born on March 6th. We thank you for those celebrating birthdays, for Jacob and for Lily. Uh, be with them and strengthen them. Lord, uh, we thank you for marriages. Uh, we thank you for Tommy and Flora uh, Fletcher as they celebrate 39 years of marriage. Uh, be with them and strengthen them. Uh, Lord, we ask that you strengthen all marriages, that you continually uh, help them uh, to cling to you and to one another. Uh, Lord, uh, be with all those uh, that are celebrating uh, spring break this week. Uh, protect them and watch over them as they uh, travel. Uh, we ask uh, that the teachers and the students uh, find much needed rest uh, so that they're able to finish out the year. Uh, Lord, uh, we give you great thanks uh, for the faith uh, of those that have passed. Uh, we especially uh, thank you for the faith that you gave Albert Curio that was in uh, at Redeemer in Austin and Kim Smith that we've been praying for uh, that uh, died this past week uh, that was in Victoria. Uh, Lord, we thank you for their faith. Uh, we thank you for your loving kindness towards them. Lord, we ask uh, that you be with their families, uh, that you give them comfort in this time of grieving. Uh, Lord, uh, 
may your kindness minister to them. Lord, we lift up all those that are uh, dealing with illness and, and suffering. Uh, for those that are having allergies or the flu or uh, sinus infections, uh, be with them. We also lift up uh, Bob and Elroy and Scout. Uh, be with them as uh, they are uh, struggling uh, with health. Lord, we lift up all these things, uh, knowing that you hear us and that you answer us. We come before you praying the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For now is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>